few people today know about Queen Sophia, the wife of Oscar II. Nevertheless, she was one of the most talented and active queens of the Bernadotte dynasty. She significantly contributed to the development of healthcare in Sweden and was one of the few royals of her time who was deeply involved in raising her children. Sophia came from the small German duchy of Nassau. None of her ancestors had ever been kings or queens. They were only dukes and duchesses. A key advantage for the Riksdag was that she was a distant relative of Gustav Vasa on her father's side. Sophia and Oscar met in 1856 when she was 20 and he was 27. At that time, Oscar was far from the throne. His father had recently become King Oscar I, and his elder brother Karl was the crown prince. After Karl, the throne would pass to Karl's son, making the likelihood of Oscar becoming king very low. Therefore, he was free to marry a duchess instead of a princess. Sophia was well educated. Being one of the first at court to speak English, she knew Goethe's and Schiller's poems by heart and took piano lessons from Anton Rubinstein himself. She was interested in politics and history. When a peasant uprising occurred in Nassau in 1848, she was only 12, but already fearless, earning her the nickname, the Democrat, from her siblings. The newlywed Sophia and Oscar were allowed to move into the R. Furstens Palace on Gustav Adolf Square, where the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is now located. They lived on separate floors from the beginning. They were very different. She was wise and devoted, though with a peculiar taste in clothing, favoring bows, ribbons, and beads. Everything changed when Oscar's elder brother, Carl XV, died in 1872 at the age of 46 after a turbulent life. Oscar then became King Oscar II, and Sophia naturally became queen, necessitating an appropriate appearance, especially with regard to jewels. We begin with the stunning pearl and diamond star tiara of Queen Sophia, when Princess Sophia of Nassau married the future King Oscar II of Sweden in 1857. She received this magnificent tiara as a wedding gift from her half-brother Adolf, Duke of Nassau, later the Grand Duke of Luxembourg. The tiara features a richly adorned diamond base crowned with five diamond stars and six vertical pear-shaped pearls. Queen Sophia often wore the star with pearls and diamonds tiara in prominent portraits which were widely reproduced, making the tiara an integral part of her enduring image, appearing atop headgear and court veils. After Queen Sophia's death in 1913, the star with pearls and diamonds tiara was inherited by her daughter-in-law, Queen Victoria of Sweden, who largely withdrew from public duties, so it was not worn publicly until her granddaughter, the future Queen Ingrid of Denmark, inherited it. Queen Ingrid occasionally lent the tiara to family members, most often to her second daughter. Princess Benedict. After Ingrid's death in 2000, the tiara passed to Princess Benedict, where it remains to this day. Another masterpiece is Queen Sophia's nine-prong tiara. This striking piece, made of 580 diamonds forming leaves, arabesques, and spirals, topped with nine diamond prongs, appears to originate from an earlier diamond comb, which was refashioned in the 1870s into its current form. Unlike most tiaras, its base is quite rigid making it less comfortable for some wearers. The earlier diamond comb was depicted in an official portrait of Queen Louise in the 1860s, while other jewels worn by Queen Louise, including a floral bracelet, went to Denmark with her daughter Queen Lovisa. The diamond comb remained in Sweden, where it was passed on to her daughter-in-law, then Princess Sophia. By the mid-1870s, Princess Sophia had transformed the diamond comb into the present tiara, and she was portrayed wearing it in an official portrait of that time. Queen Sophia wore the tiara in numerous portraits over the years, including a notable one taken in the 1890s. She also wore the nine-prong tiara in official portraits for her golden wedding anniversary with King Oscar II in 1907. Shortly before his death, Sophia kept the tiara until her own death in 1913, when it was passed on to King Gustav. In 1923, when the Crown Prince of Sweden, Gustav Adolf, married Lady Louise Mountbatten, King Gustav V gifted Queen Sophia's nine-prong tiara to the new crown Princess Louise. She first wore it the following month at a grand gala at the Royal Opera in Stockholm, just before it was featured in her initial series of official portraits paired with the Hessian emerald brooch and emerald cross. The nine-prong tiara was Crown Princess Louise's most magnificent family heirloom until she acquired the Braganza tiara and the Leuchtenberg sapphire parure, but she continued to wear it on special occasions. Queen Louise frequently wore Queen Sophia's nine-prong tiara over the years, and her appearances in it were notable. After Queen Louise's death, the tiara found a new owner in Princess Sibylla, though it remained unworn until her daughter, Princess Christina, became a leading lady at the Swedish court. 
1976, the tiara passed to Queen Sylvia, who initially complained about the tiara's weight pressing into her scalp during long ceremonies and banquets. Nevertheless, Queen Sylvia now often wears this exquisite tiara. Let's take a look at another masterpiece, the Norwegian emerald Perot. Although its origins remain uncertain, various sources suggest that this Perot might have been a wedding gift from Emperor Napoleon to his niece, Princess Augusta of Bavaria. Upon her marriage to Eugene de Buchanais in 1806, it was a tradition for the emperor to gift emerald tiaras to brides within his family. This occurred when Hortense de Buchanais married Napoleon's brother, Louis Bonaparte, when Stephanie de Buchanais married Karl of Baden, and when Napoleon himself married Archduchess Marie Louise. In 1829, Amelia became the second wife of Dom Pedro I, Emperor of Brazil. To mark this event, she was showered with precious gifts. Her mother gave her a perot consisting of a tiara, earrings, necklace, and brooch, all made of diamonds and emeralds, which were part of her own jewelry collection. The choice of emeralds might have been intentional, as they echo the colors of the Brazilian flag. When Amelia arrived in Rio de Janeiro in January 1829, the first event after her landing was a marriage blessing. On that day, the new empress of Brazil wore the emeralds, which can be seen in a beautiful painting by John Baptiste de Brett. Empress Amelia led a very tumultuous life. Her tenure as empress was short. Her husband abdicated in 1831 to return to Europe and help his daughter, Maria II of Portugal, retain her throne. He had to wage war against his younger brother, Infante Don Miguel, who had declared himself king. During this period, the Peru, along with some of Amelia's other jewels, such as the Braganza Tiara, was pawned in London to secure a loan to finance the war. Fortunately, she was able to reclaim all her precious items as her husband's party won the war. However, she probably didn't have many opportunities to wear them again, as she was widowed in 1834 at the age of 22. When Empress Amelia died in 1873, she left most of her possessions, including the Emerald Peror, to her older sister, Queen Josephine of Sweden, since her only daughter, Princess Maria Amelia, had died 20 years earlier. This caused considerable dismay within the Portuguese royal family, who had hoped to inherit some of the Empress's precious belongings. Queen Josephine, in turn, left the Emerald Perot to her daughter-in-law, Queen Sophia of Sweden and Norway, who was depicted with the tiara in a portrait, and wore various elements of the Perot, along with the Braganza tiara, at several events. When Queen Sophia passed away in 1913, she left this Perot to her beloved niece, Princess Ingeborg who was married to Sophia's third son, Prince Karl. Princess Ingeborg played a prominent role at the Swedish court, often acting as the country's first lady. She was responsible for significant alterations to the tiara and Perot necklace. Two pear-shaped emeralds surrounding the large central square emerald were removed from the tiara and replaced with two palmet motifs. These two drop-shaped stones were transformed into a pair of earrings. Princess Ingeborg successfully wore this Perot to various important events. During World War II, Norway was occupied by the Germans, forcing the royal family to leave the country. In August 1940, Crown Princess Martha and her children traveled to America in search of safety, stopping in Martha's native neutral Sweden to stay with her parents. On the day of their departure, Princess Ingeborg accompanied them to the station in Stockholm. As she bid farewell to her daughter, she handed her a package wrapped in a scarf. Inside was this emerald parure, meant as a life insurance, i.e to be sold if Crown Princess Martha faced any financial difficulties. Fortunately, Crown Princess Martha and her children were able to return to Norway after the war without needing to sell the Emerald Perot, which safely returned with them to Norway. It soon became one of Martha's most worn jewelry sets due to its significance and beauty. The Crown Princess chose to wear it to various important events. After her death, the Perot passed to her son, Harold. In 1968, Crown Prince Harold married Sonia Haraldsen after a long wait and direct confrontation with his father, the king, who strongly opposed his son and heir marrying a commoner. Soon after their wedding, Crown Princess Sonia became the sole wearer of this jewelry, as the First Lady of Norway. What's your favorite piece of jewelry? Write in the comments.